All right, so let's talk a little bit about NoSQL because uh, our th we, we, we are going to learn about this third category. Our focus area is NoSQL. So NoSQL, what is NoSQL? Next generation databases. Just I said about that. Then not only SQL. Some people use to give name as not only SQL. This is non-relational. You cannot perform joins over here. There is no relations like, uh, you know, uh, like RDBMS that these are the tables and you have to relate from here to here. Then it is having distributed architecture. You will see how do we uh, create distributed architecture uh, with MongoDB. Then these are open source. So most of the NoSQL databases are open source. And then this is having capability for horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling in the sense you can add a small, a small machine, a small machine in the sense commodity uh, kind of machine. And then you can increase capacity of your cluster. But what was happening with uh, traditional systems or uh, other uh, database servers, you have, there was no option for horizontal. It was, but there was some limitations with that, those systems. So you can scale vertically your database, oh, sorry, your servers, but not horizontally. But if you use NoSQL databases, you can scale it horizontally. Now, a few more things about NoSQL. It's schema free. We will see. You, some people say schema free. Uh, some people say dynamic schema also. So, or some people say schema less. So this is schema-less, schema-less in the sense there is no need of designing your tables and then pushing data to it. And directly you can start pushing data and on fly everything will be created. That's what is called schema-less. So as I said, NoSQL are schema-less, dynamic schema. Or some, some people say schema on fly, schema on, uh, I mean dynamic schema and so on. Easy replication. So you will see how easy replication is there in MongoDB. So this provides easy replication. There are very, very less manual inter intervention in this. Once you, will, uh, once you are done with your uh, replication setup, then system will automatically take care of failover, switchover, and so on. Lots of API, APIs are there you can use. The best part of this NoSQL is it can manage huge amount of data. As you can see, you can achieve performance by adding more and more machines to your cluster. Can be implemented on commodity hardware. So if you could remember the traditional RDBMS system, uh, it is quite difficult to run on commodity hardware, but here you can run on commodity hardwares in the sense normal machines close to 150 different different kind of databases are there so now it will be quite difficult to choose which one is fit for your right process or right uh, uh, which one is right solution for your use case but still there are some categories some uh, concepts around that to choose uh, NoSQL databases, we will try to learn how can we choose. Now, why NoSQL? So the first thing is nature of data. So different, different kind of data is there, uh, you know, like structure, semi-structure, unstructured kind of data. So RDBMS systems are not designed to manage those kind of data in better way. So there's no SQL databases uh, came into the picture and they are capable to manage those kind of data. Then application development methodology. Now people are using different, different kind of methodology. Some people are using agile. So if we talk about the code velocity and, uh, you know, and implementation level, people wants to perform all activities at the same time. So uh, if we talk about the traditional system, it was quite difficult because you need to take care of database and then you have to 
uh, write your application according to your database but here on fly activity you can perform so you do, you do not need to worry about your database directly you can start pushing your code directly to the database and it will take care because uh, as uh, this is having flexible schema or there is no schema uh, you can say uh, so this will allow you to push your code without knowing the structure of your database. We will see how it works. Then if we talk about the other system, it was quite complex to perform our analytical activities. And lots of operational issues were there. Uh, if we talk about the data warehouse systems, so operational system will be there from there you have to use some data integration technology then you will push it to uh, database and then you have to use some analytical application so now the scenarios are getting changed directly you can attach your application to NoSQL databases and also you can attach up uh, analytical application directly to the NoSQL databases so uh, these are the things now as I said, the data is growing very fast, like an uh, unstructured data, semi-structured data, and traditional systems are not capable to handle uh, those kind of data. So that's the reason, again, this NoSQL came into the picture. So benefit of NoSQL, you can, uh, you know, manage huge amount of data, and then you can stream your data uh, in milliseconds. I mean, very fast uh, you can uh, stream your data and different, different kind of data like a structure and a structure, semi-structure data you can uh, analyze and uh, perform analytical activity on your uh, database if you have loaded. And then veracity in the sense, let's say, uh, if, you, uh, if you are not able to drive value out of any data you can even you can capture those kind of information also now uh, another benefit could be agile development quick changes and frequent code pushes so what happens is as it does not uh, uh, worry about a schema for example let's say if you are developing any application and you wanted to push your code just you should have connectivity with your database and then you can start pushing your uh, codes directly to the database so at the same time you can develop you can test also and you can deploy uh, right away so again this will be beneficial also uh, it's object oriented programming that is e easy to use and it's very much flexible it provides horizontal scaling instead of expensive hardware as we have seen if we wanted to uh, scale vertically uh, then we need to buy more CPU more RAMs and again there are some limitations to that but here we can use horizontal scaling uh, with the help of commodity hardwares or normal machines now guys let us talk about categories of NoSQL databases if you could remember the second slide, uh, we learned how many uh, categories are there of uh, databases. So we understood three categories were there. First was OLTP, second one was OLAP, and third one was NoSQL. Now again, NoSQL database is classified in four categories, four subcategories I can say. So uh, first is document based second one is key value based third one is white column or columnar you can say and fourth one is graph store so here i have highlighted this document base because mongodb falls under this document oriented database so uh, i have kept it here at the first position so let's understand at high level uh, what is document base or you know what is key value store white column or graph just at high level so document database pair each key with a complex data structure known as document so key and value pair will be there so value will have kind of documents and that 
uh, structure is quite complex. You can make it quite complex. Complex in the sense it can keep more data. We will see how, how do we do that. And then documents can contain many different key value pairs, key array pairs or even nested documents. So let's say if you have document, inside that document you can add another document. Inside that again you can add another and so on. So then it becomes quite complex. So let's say if you have data and if you have a relationship about those data, so you can club into a single document and uh, you can derive value out of this. I will show you how can we derive value with embedding or nesting documents inside that in Model 3 schema designing. Then second type of category is called key value store. So key value stores are the simplest NoSQL databases. Every single item in the database is stored as an attribute name or key together with, together with its value. So how it will be there? So we understood in documents, uh, you know, the, there will be uh, again key value pair, but uh, value may have array or nested documents. Here what happens is in key value, one key will be there and then all other values will be there. So that's what is key value store. Third, third one category is white column stores or we say columnar database also. So white column stores, uh, uh, I mean example of these are Cassandra or HBase. And these are uh, mainly, uh, you know, used to store columns of data together instead of rows. So this will be mainly used for analytical activity. We will see some examples, use cases in module 8. And then uh, fourth category is graph stores. So graph stores are used to store information about networks, uh, you know, or social connections and so on. If you have some kind of con uh, those kind of connections or those kind of use cases. Uh, examples are Node.js and HypergraphDB. Some more examples are also there. So Satya is asking which database falls in key value store category. Divishri is asking any example DB of key value store. Yes, it's there uh, uh, in the next slide. So all right, guys. So let me move to the next slide now. So Satya and Divishri were asking categories. So for example, key value stores are Memcached, Coherence, Redis. Some more are there. So just I have, uh, because as I said, there are 150 no SQL databases are there in the market. So it's quite difficult to mention each and every name. And even I am not aware about those names. So key value stores, uh, the, I mean, you can say, you can remember Memcached comes under key value stores and these are very fast. Columnar database, uh, you know, this big table, which is from Google and then HBase from Apache, Accumulo, again from, I, I don't remember who, who gave this. Even Cassandra falls under this columnar database. Now, document-oriented database, so MongoDB falls under document-oriented database, CoachDB, CloudN, CoachBase, and some other databases are there. For graph stores, Neo4j, Oracle, NoSQL, HyperGraphDB, and some more names are also there in these categories. So we have question. Uh, Rao has asked question, SDFS PIG is columnar, right? Uh, PIG is not a columnar, it's not a database, uh, Rao. Uh, that is a scripting language which you use in Hadoop ecosystem to process your data. PIG is a tool for, uh, you know, a scripting tool to process your data. That is not a database. Is that clear, Rao? In fact, HBase is a database which falls under columnar database. Did I answer your question? Yes, uh, yes, uh, Rao, you were right, but it's a language, it's not a database. Did you get answer? Okay, thank you. 